Hello, a very big warm welcome to Freedom Church Online Christmas Celebration. I am Paul and I'm here with my beautiful wife Karen and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this great season of celebrating the birth of Jesus, the Son of God. And we as a church family pray that you feel a part of us as we celebrate together. This is the fourth weekend of Advent and we have David Steele speaking to us today with a talk entitled Joy of the World. He explains beautifully how Jesus gives us joy, not just at Christmas, but throughout the year too. But first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We come before you with great joy as we celebrate the birth of Christ, your son. We come to worship you and hear you speak to each one of us at this Christmas. May you strengthen us in your truth as our heart's desire is to grow stronger in a relationship with you. Holy Spirit, I just want to welcome you here. Come Holy Spirit, because we want to learn from you. Holy Spirit, just come, come and fill each one of us on Zoom or live. Just come and fill us. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Our Bible reading is Luke 2, 8 to 20. And it says this, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Oh, how the Lord announced the arrival of Jesus Christ, a company of angels, absolutely incredible. Now it's time to worship Jesus, the Son of God who came to earth. the <laughs> 
Savior reigns Let men their songs employ While fields and floods Rock hills and plains Repeat the sound in joy Repeat the sound in joy Repeat, repeat the sound in joy love to pray with you or for you. Every Tuesday evening we have a prayer time. We pray for personal situations as well as national and global matters too. And it starts at 8pm over Zoom and you are more than welcome to join us. Or if something concerns you and you would like our team to pray for you, please just email us at info at freedomchurch.co.uk. Also, the link is in our bio on the YouTube. But now it's time to listen to David. Hey guys, I'm really glad to be able to be with you for this last Sunday service before Christmas. Of course, I would absolutely love to be with you in person and I can hardly believe that it's been almost two years since I've set foot in England and I've seen many of your faces. So I'm really glad to have this opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And, and often at Christmas time, we're told that consumerism, the focus on food and presents, is actually a distraction from what Christmas is really about. And, and even as a full-time missionary, I have to consciously remind myself that Christmas is a time to focus on Jesus. Why he came, what he did, what that means for me, what that means for my calling to share him with others. And there's a famous Christmas carol that you guys will know really well. It's called Joy to the World. And it says, joy to the world, the Lord is come. So there's something about Jesus having come to the earth that brought great joy. And in this service, I'd really like us to focus on how Jesus offers us joy on a level that cannot be found anywhere else. And actually, there's a scripture that talks about fixing our eyes on Jesus, and it also mentions joy. So that's where I'd like to start. It's Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. And it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, 
the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Here's the word joy coming now. Look at this. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So did you see that? First of all, it tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, which is what we know we need to do at Christmas. But then where it used the word joy, it didn't talk about Jesus bringing joy to us because that's what we usually think about. Actually, what it says is that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. So he came into this world and he endured the pain and suffering. And he knew that if he completed the mission that the father had given him, actually it would bring him great joy. And so we have to ask ourselves, what exactly was his mission and why would it bring him joy? And and if Jesus is the one getting joy from this, then why do we sing about us getting joy from it? <laughs> so first of all, if we think about why Jesus came into the earth, it's hard not to think of John 3.16, one of the most famous verses in the whole Bible. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So if we summarise that, we could say that it starts with God loving us. That sounds really good. And it ends with us getting something called eternal life. Great. But we have to ask ourselves for a minute. What exactly is eternal life? And, and I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, David, this is silly. Please stop wasting my time. I know what eternal life is. Eternal life means that we go to heaven when we die. Well, is that what eternal life means? Let's see what Jesus said. So this is John 17, 3. Jesus said, now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Did you see that? Eternal life is to know God. That is the definition of eternal life. It's to know God. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves that the invitation of the gospel is not to join a religious club or start going somewhere different on a Sunday or even simply to change your eternal destination. The invitation of the gospel and why Jesus came into the earth is it's an invitation to know the God who made everything, to have a real intimate, living relationship with him. He walks with me. He talks with me. And you might be thinking to yourself, but, but David, why can't we just have a relationship with him anyway? If he made us, why can't we just talk to him? And, and I remember uh, a few years ago, um, a friend of mine said to me, David, you keep saying that God loves me and God wants a relationship with me, but I've been praying every day for the last two weeks and it just feels like I'm praying to a brick wall, like there's no answer, I don't feel anything. And so we could ask ourselves, well, what's the problem? What's the problem? Is God deaf? Is it that he can't hear our prayers? Or, or if he does hear them, is he somehow unable to answer or are we unable to hear his answer? And actually, the Bible tells us clearly, it says in Isaiah 59, 1 to 2, it says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities, that's another word for your kind of your sins, the way that you've walked away from God, 
Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So actually, this God who loves us so much actually was not able to have a living relationship with us because of our sin. So actually, the problem was never with God. The problem was with us. And so the mission of Jesus was to deal with the thing that was separating us from God because his desire and the joy set before him was to have an intimate relationship with us. So do you realise that when Jesus was hanging, broken and bleeding on the cross, he considered it worth it because he would have the joy of knowing you. I think that that is incredible. But you know what? It's not automatic. You see, the Bible says that Jesus died for everyone on planet Earth. 1 John 2, 2 says he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So he died for the sins of the whole world, but Jesus will not experience the joy of knowing everybody in this world. Why not? Well, let's not forget that Jesus made it clear who would experience this salvation, this eternal life to know him. If we go back to John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, shall know him. And so what's interesting about this is if you really know what it means to believe in him, we're going to talk about that in a minute, not only will it bring him great joy, but you will have found the key to receiving incredible joy yourself. So let's talk about that for a minute. What does it really mean to believe? Is it enough to just believe that God exists? Well, actually, the Bible says that the, the demons believe that, but the demons are not saved. OK, so Abraham in the Old Testament, was the first person whose faith was credited to him as righteousness. That means he had the kind of belief in God that God says, yes, OK, you can have an intimate relationship with me. And one day, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Now, you've got to understand that for Abraham, this meant giving up everything every hope that he had, every dream that he had, every desire that Abraham had for the future was tied up in his son, Isaac. So for, for Abraham to be asked to sacrifice Isaac was, it, he might as well have been dead if Isaac wasn't alive anymore. Every hope that he had was in Isaac. And, and we know that at the last minute, as Abraham lifted the knife to sacrifice Isaac, that an angel stopped him. And actually, he didn't have to sacrifice Isaac. But look at what the Bible says about Abraham, because Abraham was ready to sacrifice Isaac. James 2, 21 20 to 23, it says, Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did? when he offered Isaac on the altar, you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. In other words, he had an intimate relationship with God, which brought God joy and brought him tremendous joy. Now, now, did Abraham believe? Did Abraham have faith? Absolutely. Was it just in his heart? Oh, yes, I believe in God. 
No, it wasn't. Abraham's faith was shown by his actions. He was ready to give up everything. And, and I just want to say this, guys. Faith is only true faith when our actions follow. It's not our actions that save us. It's not our actions that enable us to have that intimate relationship with God. It's the faith in Jesus, actually, that saves us and gives us eternal life. How do we know that? Well, the Bible says that eternal life is a gift. This is Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, we talk a lot about gifts at Christmas, don't we? <laughs> and you know what's really sad to me? Is that the more I walk with God and the more I travel and visit different churches and different Christians, I get more and more saddened at the fact that there are so many people in our churches, people who call Jesus their Lord, but actually they are not experiencing the joy of a real living relationship with God. They have not received the gift, the ultimate gift, which we're talking about this Christmas. And maybe some of you who are watching this video, actually you have not received the gift. You're not living in the joy of that eternal life, that knowing God, that walking with him and that talking with him. And I hope that you'll be able to receive that gift this Christmas, because we can't receive that gift until we understand that faith without actions is not true faith. Actually, the call of the gospel is just like Abraham. It's to give up everything. And, you know, Jesus says exactly the same thing about the joy that he gives us. This is John 15, 9 to 11. He says, as the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. Now look at this. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And so I just want to say that there is a gift, there is a marvellous gift of joy that God wants to give you this Christmas and every day of your life. And if you know that you haven't been experiencing that joy, perhaps it's because you haven't been keeping the commands of Jesus. Maybe you've had what you call faith, but you haven't had the actions that follow, which actually show that the faith is genuine faith. Perhaps some of us haven't had our eyes fixed on him. Perhaps some of us have had some things in our lives that actually we've considered more important to us than spending time with him or doing the things that he wants us to do. And this is an everyday challenge for me and for you. But why don't we come before God right now and do what I believe will bring him great joy, which is to just say sorry, to say sorry, God, for when we have not made you number one, when we've not fixed our eyes on you and when there have been things in our lives that have been more important to us than you. And then why don't we do something? Why don't we ask him to give us, to fill us with that joy that he talks about, that our joy might be complete this Christmas? Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you right now for the incredible gift of eternal life that you want to give us this Christmas. I want to thank you for reminding us in this message that eternal life is not just about where we go when we die, but eternal life is to know you. I thank you that you've reminded us that you want to walk closely. You want to walk intimately with us, Lord. But we understand right now that 
unless we give up our lives, unless we give up everything, we cannot experience that joy. And so, Father, we want to do what brings you joy right now. We want to come before you and we want to say, Father, we're sorry. We're sorry for not fixing our eyes on you. We're sorry for when we've not given you everything. And we thank you that for the joy set before you, you endured the cross. You forgave our sins. You paid the punishment for our sins. And we just want to receive that gift right now. As we turn from our sin, we ask you that you would pour into our hearts your joy and that we would walk in the reality of a living, intimate relationship with you. And as we do that, we will experience the greatest gift that we could experience this Christmas, the joy of knowing you, the joy of eternal life. Help us not to get distracted by all the other things that go on at Christmas, Lord. May we enjoy Christmas. May we enjoy our families. But may that joy spring from the knowledge that we are in a living relationship with the God who created everything, who loves us and said that he's come to give us life in all its fullness. In Jesus name. Have a wonderful Christmas and I look forward to seeing you guys as soon as I possibly can. God bless you. Thank you, David, for your lovely talk. Let's spend a moment in the presence of God. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, we want to reflect on what we have heard with you. And we want to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us with joy. Lord, thank you that joy comes from you through our relationship with you. May we receive and enjoy the marvellous gift of joy this Christmas and every day of our life. And may joy overflow through us to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. One way we can express our faith is by giving, giving to God and to other people around at this time. We have chosen three charities, which we as a church would love to give to this Christmas. Let's just introduce those three charities that we have chosen. The first one is called Home for Good. Home for Good, supporting children who are currently in care in, um, at the moment and getting them into foster homes or adopted homes in England. There are about 3,000 of these children in care at the moment in this country. Our second charity is Care for Children, and they've taken over one million children out of orphanages and put them into adoptive homes. And the third one we'd like to support this Christmas is Afghan Welcome. They are supporting the children who have come as refugees to this country. There are around 7,500 of them at the moment. If you would like to help us as a church support these three charities, please get in contact with us via our website. But let me just show you this video, which gives you a glimpse of each charity.
This really is a momentous occasion in British political history. This is a man brought up in South London. Her Majesty the Queen has asked me to form a new government and I have accepted. Our background should not necessarily define who we are, how far we can go, how much we can achieve. Me standing here before you is a testament of the fact that someone from humble beginnings can achieve the highest service in office. You know my story. I was taken into care. But someone gave me a chance. Someone gave me hope. I was adopted. But someone gave me a future. A future history. Didn't we? A future history. Lockdown was hard for everyone. Do you remember being reunited with your loved ones again? It felt great to be back with family. But there has been a hidden pandemic. Over a million children have become orphans because of COVID. Your donation of five pounds or $10 will help Lily find a new loving family. Children should be in families. At Care for Children, we make that happen. Friends, something amazing is happening right now. This church and many others around the country are wrapping their arms around vulnerable Afghan families who have fled the Taliban to come to the UK. They've only been able to carry what they can put on a plane in hand luggage, and so they're ill-equipped for life here in the UK. And so the church is stepping into the gap and offering them assistance. At Afghan Welcome, we know where all the hotels that the government is using to house refugees are. And we have churches almost everywhere, but we'd love to see your church part of this movement. I want to give you three practical things that you can do to help. The first is join. We want you to join the network. We want to know that your church is keen to help. And as we said, we can link your church up with hotels where Afghans are being housed, or eventually we're into the villages and towns and cities they're going to be housed for longer term housing. But we need to know where you are. So join the movement. You can do that at welcomechurches.org slash join. The second thing you can do is pray, but pray with knowledge. And we'd love to give you the knowledge of what's going on and how you can direct your prayers to be effective. And so again, come to afghanwelcome.org where all the latest information will be for you available at the tips of your fingers. The third thing you can do is give. We're kind of discouraging the collection of kind of secondhand materials. We don't have time for that. It's costly and it takes up a lot of time. And in some cases, particularly with items that relate to mothers and babies, it might be dangerous. So we're sourcing brand new materials from suppliers and we need money to pay for the logistics around getting the right equipment to the right places. If you don't want to give money, you can also give items and you can do that by going to our wish list. And the wish list have got some items that we know that Afghans need because we've asked them through a basic needs assessment. So go to our website, afghanwelcome.org slash support to find out how you can either give money or items. Friends, this is a unique moment in our country, a wonderful opportunity to show the love of Christ in very practical ways. Let's do this together. If you would like to join us, 
in being generous and giving towards those in need in, in these three charities, then please do contact us and we will gather all the uh, contributions together, all the donations, and we will send them off. Thank you. Let's sing a couple of carols. God and sinners reconciled 
And now for the closing blessing. May the joy of our Heavenly Father fill you this Christmas. May you be filled with the joy as you live for Christ. And may the Holy Spirit bring joy to you through which flows through up to others. But in the meantime, before we get to 2022, may we wish you a very, very happy Christmas. May you be blessed. Have a great Christmas and may 2022 be a year of prosperity for you. God bless you and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>